Many of you have heard of Bitcoin, the magical, cryptical, purely digital currency. Perhaps not all of you have heard of blockchain, which is one of the pieces of Bitcoin. As I'll explain to you, decentralization is central to the appeal of blockchain and of Bitcoin. And as I'll tell the story, I'm at the center of the story, not just the center of this dot. Because I was present at the creation of the blockchain. That is, along with a colleague, the two of us invented the blockchain. So let me jump to the beginning of the story. It's 1989, and I was a young researcher at Bellcor, Bell Communications Research, at the time the brand new Bell Labs of the local phone companies in the US, which had just been broken up, as some of you may remember. My field was cryptography, the science and engineering of protecting information, keeping it secret, if it should be secret, and making sure it doesn't change if it shouldn't. And that last piece is the center of the story. So it's, it's 1989, and a new guy who was just hired at the lab came to me with what he thought would be um, a good problem for us to tackle. His name was Scott Stornetta. The problem was how to timestamp a digital document. So we did tackle that problem and came up with a reasonable solution for it. The paper describing our solution, which you see behind me, was published the following summer at Crypto 1990, the main technical confer uh, conference in the field of cryptography. So for us, a digital document is just a computer file of any kind on, on your computer, nowadays on your phone or stored in the cloud. We had in mind business records, but a digital document could also be a um, lab notebook entry, patent application, legal contract, even that photo of your cat is a digital document that can be modified or changed easily, as you all know. Back in 1989, it was clear that all of the world's records were moving online. They hadn't quite gotten there yet, but they, that's where things were going. And Stornetta and I were deeply worried about the integrity and authenticity of the world's records. Cryptological tools, cryptographical tools that were available at the time pointed to a straightforward solution to the problem. Rely on a single central trusted entity for the integrity of records, at least within a certain domain or area. This corresponds in the real world to relying on City Hall for your marriage license, the DMV for your driver's license, your bank for the balance of your checking account. But relying on a single trusted entity is what security people call a single point of failure, one that can be bribed, corrupted, hacked. We wondered if we could do better. It turned out, after working on it a while, we could. For the next three or four minutes, I'm going to animate our solution. I'll explain to you how the blockchain actually works. But first, I'll start with one technical tool, which I'll explain to you by means of a metaphor. There's a standard way to, as it were, take the fingerprint of any digital file or record. That's an app metaphor. The uh, fingerprint of a file is small, no matter what the size of the file. The fingerprint of a file gives you no information about the file itself, just like my own right forefinger fingerprint gives you no information about me. You can't tell from my fingerprint how tall I am, uh, the color of my hair, whether I have any hair. The um, fingerprint is characteristic of the file. If you take the fingerprint of several identical copies of the same file, you'll always get the same fingerprint. And most important of all, the fingerprint of a file is unique to the file. Two different files, even if they differ in only a single bit, 
will have completely different fingerprints. So now I'll show you how Stordetta and I use this fingerprinting process, which is known by, in, in the literature, by the way, as one-way hash functions. I'll show you how we use fingerprinting to solve our timestamping problem and build a blockchain. Our solution was actually spun out of Belcor as a commercial enterprise called Surety in order to offer timestamping services. So here's how it worked. We would receive timestamp requests from customers consisting of the fingerprints of the records they wanted to register with us. As records came in, we would group them into units. Now I'll call them blocks. We would, as it were, take the fingerprint of each block, resulting in a summarizing fingerprint that depends on the, the entire set of fingerprints in the block, resulting in a summary fingerprint that can be linked unforgeably but efficiently to each of the requests. As more requests come in, we would group them into blocks again. For here's, here's the second block, we would treat it the same way, take its fingerprint, but link it, again using fingerprinting, with the previous block. And the same thing with the third block, and a fourth block, and so on. After a while, we have a long chain of blocks. Every so often, for example, once a week, we would take the previous week's chain of blocks and, in exactly the same way, boil them down to a single summary fingerprint that encapsulates the entire previous week of requests. And thereby, because of the chaining, depends on the entire history of the chain up to that. We wanted to take this single summary fingerprint of the week and turn it into a widely witnessed, widely witnessable, widely verifiable event. How did we do that in 1995? We, we placed that fingerprint in a classified advertisement in the national edition of the Sunday New York Times every week. That chain is still running right now to this very day. Behind me, you see a, you see a picture where I'm holding uh, the most recent copy of the Sunday New York Times. And let's zoom in. You'll, you can see an advertisement there containing a, a digital fingerprint, a number, every bit of which depends on every bit of every single request that was been, that's been received by our timestamping service since it was commercially launched in 1995. Look for it in next Sunday's Times. The, um, now the story jumps ahead 13 years. Just a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated the 10-year anniversary of Bitcoin with the appearance of this paper. Many of you ha have read that Bit Bitcoin was created by a pseudonymous author, engineer, designer, economist who called himself or herself or themselves Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi created a financial system that completely got rid of the central and centralizing roles of banks. But as in any financial system, Satoshi needed a way to ensure the integrity of the transactions that happened in the system. So that if I promise to send you 17 Bitcoin, you can't turn that promise into a promise for 1,700 Bitcoin or 17 Bitcoin cents. In order to do this, Satoshi directly adopted the blockchain algorithm that I just explained to you. Now, I'm, I've omitted a complete description of the brilliant way Satoshi combined several ideas to, to create the system. But the blockchain was used, is still being used, to ensure the integrity, the immutability, the unchangeability of the entire history of transactions in the ledger of Bitcoin. Now, banks are not the only kinds of central institutions whose records we depend on for important aspects of our lives. And by now, blockchain has been suggested 
for all kinds of record-keeping projects, uh, silly ones and solidly grounded ones. I'll finish by listing a, saying a few words about a, a few of the more solidly grounded ones. ID2020 is an international project to provide a digital, personal digital identity to anyone who wants one. In particular, the more than one billion people on the planet who cannot depend on a national ID because of political chaos or natural disaster. Here's a completely different sort of records. The documents that come along with the international global supply chain, tracking goods from their origin, their, uh, the contents of the containers they're shipped in, customs certification, and so on. IBM, for one, has a large commercial offering for this. But it's not only huge companies and humongous shipping containers. Did you wonder about the origin of the fish you had for dinner last night? Pretty soon you'll be able to track the supply chain of that fish all the way to your plate. Coming back now to my original motivation for the integrity of digital records, I'm working now on a project to bring cryptographic verifiability to the audit and financial reporting of business records of all sorts, audit chain. So, lo these many years later, it turns out that asking a pointed question about decentralizing the integrity of digital records can upend all kinds of central institutions. I'm excited. Thank you. <laughs>